let's take a look at how to solve quadratic and rational inequalities. All right, so first you want to rewrite the equation so that zero is on the right side. You can only add and subtract this over. You can't do any multiplication or division. So there we go. We've got x squared minus 6x minus 72 is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so then the next step after you have everything on one side is that you want to factor. And if you have a rational expression, you would factor the numerator and the denominator. So this equation then factors into x minus 12, x plus 6. All right, step three is the only step that differs based on if it's a quadratic or a rational equation. So that's why we can do these two the same because they're very similar. So let's start with the quadratic here. It says find the zeros. So that means if I were to have an equation, I would have x equals 12 and x equals negative 6. Those are the zeros of my equation. Then you're going to put those zeros on a number line. So I have here negative 6 and 12. And you're going to put either an open circle or a closed circle based on this symbol here. Since it's an greater than or equal to, the equal to means it's closed circle. If it were just a greater than, you must have an open circle. Now that's for quadratic. Quadratic's way more simple than rational. And I'll talk more about rational when I do a rational example. But with the rational, you factor the numerator and denominator. You take the numerator zeros and put them on a number line just like the quadratic. If it's an open circle or a closed circle, depends on the sign. Then you take the zeros from the denominator and those will always be open. The reason the denominator is always open is because those zeros would mean that you are dividing by zero and you can't do that. So denominator are always open circles. So we take our zeros, put them on the number line, and we have closed circles because of the greater than or equal to sign. Step four is to test regions formed by the critical values to see if the region is positive or negative. So I have something happening to the left of negative six, in between negative six and 12, and then to the right of 12. So I'm gonna pick values that are in between negative 6 and 12, I'm going to pick 0, I'm going to pick 100, and I'm going to pick negative 100. I like to pick extreme values because then you don't have to find the exact value, you just need to see if the region is positive or negative. So I'm going to plug these values here into the original equation up at the top. Actually, let's do the one where we're solved for 0. So I'm going to plug them into x squared minus 6x minus 72. So negative 100 squared is a very, very big positive number. Minus 6 times negative 100 is even more positive. Minus 72, this region is a positive region. And I see how I didn't even get the exact number? And you could, you could plug them into a calculator and get the exact number but you don't need to. You just need to know if the region is positive or negative. If I were to plug zero in here, I get zero squared minus six times zero minus 72. So negative 72, that's a minus. And then if we plug 100 in, 100 squared, that's 10,000 minus six times 100 is 10,000 minus 600, still positive, minus 72. So that's a positive number. All right, so now that we've got what each region is, we're looking if the region is a positive region or a negative region, then we can move on to step five. All right, the last step here is to look at our original equation once we have it solved for, and we have my equation is greater than or equal to zero. So if the original inequality has greater than zero, that means all the regions that are positive are regions that are true. If you had less than zero, then all of the negative regions would be true. So you're gonna find the regions that actually work, so we're looking for the positive regions, so that means we will go this way on my graph, 
and this way on the graph. So those are the regions that were the positive regions. So those are the regions that worked. We write our final answer in interval notation. So we have negative infinity to negative 6, union 12 to infinity. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples. So this one will be a rational equation. So first thing you want to do is make sure zero's on the right side, and it is, it is, and then we will factor. So it's already factored, so then we can move on to the step where we put the zeros on the number line. So let's start off with the zeros of the numerator. So what makes x plus 2 equal to 0? That would be negative 2. And that sign is going to follow whatever my inequality sign is. If it's a less than, it would have been open, but since it's a less than or equal to, our circle is closed. Okay, then after we get all of the zeros from the numerator, we're going to find the zeros from the denominator. And zeros from the denominator are very special because you can never have zero in your denominator. The zeros that do come from the denominator are always open. So what makes x minus 5 equal to 0? That would be positive 5. And like I said, that it will be open because denominator zeros are always open. Okay, now after we get the zeros with the corresponding closed or open circles, the next thing that you want to do is that you want to test each region. So I'm going to pick values in between. If zero is in my region, I always pick zero because it's the easiest number to test. Uh, maybe I'll pick 10 and negative 10. I'm just picking random values that are in the region formed by the critical values. So if I start off with zero, zero plus two is a positive, zero minus five is a negative five, a positive over a negative is negative. Let's try 10. 10 plus 2 is positive 12. 10 minus 5 is positive 5. A positive over a positive is positive. Now let's try negative 10. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. Negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15. A negative divided by a negative is positive. So we have whether or not our regions are positive or negative. And then so we just need to from there write our answer. So we have here that we want the values less than zero. Less than zero means negative numbers. So the region where there are negative numbers would be this one right here in between negative two and five. So the final answer would be written the interval notation. I can be equal to negative two, but I cannot be equal to five. And there is the final answer.